Ruth here, and this is what I got from Stationery Island. So it was a bit of a sale, sort of, but um, you know, I noticed that I haven't actually really um, actually opened like cut into an unopened package in a while. Well, I was showing you. I guess. As you can see, it says sketch marks. Okay, so this is that. But also, I got these acrylic paint pads. Um, one millimeter fine nib, 24 colors. The water-based, non-toxic, multi-surface. Shake, press, <clears throat> draw, recap. Um, <clears throat> can be used on most surfaces, including stone, glass, ceramic, wood, textiles, metal, paper, and more. So I personally have never used these before. Stationary Island acrylic paint pen, 1.0 millimeter fine nib on it. So like you're supposed to shake it and press down. So let me just get this. I, I bought this ages ago at the pen and paper shop. So I'll open this one in a second. I'm not knocking anything over. Um, this is, uh, by the way, a multi techniques pad. It's, by the looks of it, charcoal, chalk, a normal pencil, paint, and uh, water, and you know, pen. So. Yeah. It's very, very thick pieces of paper. Okay, so I'm just hmm. So if you see the nib. purple is gradually going down. Interesting. See? It's 
so like for instance It's very smooth by the looks of it. I wanted to try them on um, the coloring in on the, those uh, plastic shrinky thingies, you know. I was like, I wanted to see if those would work better in um, in the oven. So, like, for instance, I'm just get these. I still have them on the desk, so like. These plastic crystal clear shrinky things. And what I'm trying to do like for instance, this is one of my designs. It's just, you know, area. So like as you might see, um I'm trying to find one that you don't see really the streaks in it very well. So I colored this one in with the Arteza watercolor brush pens. And I think I used the Sharpie on this one. You can't really see it, can you? But um, I'm going to do another one. And I'm going to try it with the acrylic paint pens. I'm going to bake them all and see which one turns out better. And I've got these little backings here. Um, for uh, pin backings, and I do have a magnet as well. So I'm gonna see if I can make something. So yeah, this is one of the more simple drawings that I did a while ago. So hopefully, I'll turn out all right when I finally get around to it. So anyway, so this is, how long does it take to dry? Okay, so a bit longer than whatever, how long it's been since I drew it for the coloring in thing, but if I'm just writing or drawing, I'll just like, uh, you know, like just swiftly like this line, that line's dry already. It's just more of the, the coloring, colored in parts, like little parts of that, which is still slightly damp. So anyway, so that's that. So, Excited to see how that will work. Um, well, while we're, this is totally separate. My brother visited today and he brought with me some cute, um, what is it called? Coloring Haven Collection Chibi. 48 super cute designs by Josh Lee. A coloring book. So, like, for instance, you can probably tell who that might remind you of, especially with the hat from uh, Konosuba, I think. Pretty sure anyway, because I actually haven't finished watching or started watching that yet. They labeled it Arc Wizard Chibi. 
And like they got some other cool ones. Like there's this um, other cool looking one. It's got like two mermaid things though. Like this one has got a uh, vampire chibi one. Oh, that's pretty cool. And like, it's got one that says Moon Princess. That just reminds me of Sailor Moon. <laughs> See? Also, this one is cool too. This one is, is the. I don't know, Bugisha should be. I think that one's pretty cool. But, um, I'm tempted just to really photocopy, then to color in here, because I don't want to, I want to like, you know, be able to color it again if I want to, you know? And also, I think I'd need to photocopy it and print it off on a thicker cardstock. And what this is, can buy all the, uh, you know, uh, see, on the back here, it's got coloring pencils, and I kind of don't really have any good ones right now, and this video is about pens, so, <clears throat> I'm going to, you know, I think I'll just, Photocopy it and print it off, reprint it on a hard bag, harder cardstock, like, so I don't wreck the book. It's also very nice that it's not double printed on both sides, otherwise that would, the, the things would bleed through then, I believe. Okay, so, it's very... Let me just put this up a bit. It's very big. I mean, I knew it would be big, right? Because it's a whole case of uh, 96 <laughs> alcohol based art pens. It was on sale, so I got the full 96. <laughs> I never had any markers like this. I thought I might try, you know. It's very cool. It says, versatile for a variety of art styles with a wide range of colors for all forms of art, design, illustration, and crafts. These dual nib sketch markers include a fine tip nib for precision detail, whilst the jewel nib is ideal for broad strokes and covering large areas. Stationary Island's alcohol-based sketch markers are an ideal tool for sheeting, layering, and blending. I follow them on uh, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. It's a very... Well, I couldn't resist, you know? It was on sale, sort of. it comes in a, in a box because I have nowhere to put it. Because <laughs> uh, you can probably see all the colors. There we go. They did have like smaller packs, but like when I added them up, it came to 96. So I thought I might as well just get them all. <laughs> so, let's just try. Um, 
we'll just go for a green, shall we? So here is the number 46 Vivid Green. So here is what it looks like. On one end is the chisel one, so very smooth. And the other one is the fine nib, so like a normal. normal marker so like mm. it's very nice So I'm just gonna color some, you know, yeah, why not? So, uh, here's a uh, 73 Ultramarine. So, this is the fine. Light Violet 82. Well, yes, there's a uh, the uh, chisel wound. Blue 67 pastel blue and fine. Oh, 
solid green. Why not? Pencil kind of covering the like, little thing and a pen. This is a uh, from a Kelly Lou. But yeah. Um uh, I'm curious if this one bleeds through or not. Some kind of mark the end. And it does bleed through. So yeah, I'm definitely going to re-photocopy this on thicker cardstock. But yeah. These are... Oh, I shouldn't bleed through this though. Oh, shit. Well, slight. There, see. So from one to eight layers, I can think of what else, how else to put it. So like, one layer, you can still slightly see the bleed through, and it goes two layers, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this paper isn't as thick as you might think, even though it does feel sturdy. You know what? I want to try my watercolor paper. Okay. I had a bit of a, a scrap because I, I erased something on here. But, um, yeah, so let's go back to this blue. So, it's got a... The watercolor paper is very, like, got a texture to it. So, like, one... Two, three, four. I think that was four. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So that's. You can still slightly see it bleed through, but not as obvious. So not as obvious, and you can still see it bleed through. So these never said they would not bleed through, so unless it actually does say it somewhere and I missed it. It's just to be expected really. Dealing with a marker and a paper. 
Um, but yeah, that's... That's it really. The, uh... Acrylic pens did not bleed through though. I didn't really try very hard though, but still. Yeah, that's... That's that, I guess. Um... I might as well draw something. I don't know what to draw. What should I draw? Mm. I don't know.
Sarah.